Greetings, everyone, and welcome to episode 106, 106 of Teaching Tales, the podcast totally devoted to sharing stories from the world of education. Once again, I am your host, Brett Coley, an educator in beautiful Southern California. Joining me today, a return guest way back in episode number three. Three to one. I, is that amazing? The one, the only, Bill Selleck. Bill, how you doing, man? I am good. You know, I've been listening to Brett Goldstein's podcast, Films to Be Buried With, and when he brings someone back on, he calls it the resurrection. But he does such a cool voice. So I feel like this is like teaching tales. The resurrection. The resurrection. Yeah, now, Brett Goldstein, that's from Ted Lasso? Yes. Yeah, yeah. He writes and stars. You might know him as Roy Kent. Roy Kent. Roy Kent. No, we won't do the chapter <laughs> like that. So, because um, it's a family show. <laughs> so so not, you're you're a different Brett, so I thought it would work. Yes, it, it works well. Um, first of all, for, for anyone who wasn't around for episode three or was around and doesn't remember or hasn't connected, give us a quick rundown. Like, for anyone listening, who is Bill Selleck? Who am I? Uh, so my main job, I'm director of technology at Hillbrook School uh, in Los Gatos, San Jose area. We're a K-8 and we are building a high school, so we're we're working on a K twelve. So, all the things that go with that, and and actually using the city as a classroom. That's what we're talking about. So, super duper exciting. Um, the other thing I'm really excited about is um, I don't know if I've even told you this. Mm -hmm. I'm on the board for Namely, the National Association of Media Literacy Education. I nice. am the co chair of their summer, their July conference. So, awesome. really excited about that. We have called for a presenter that's closing like this week. So very it's good. It's going to be good. Very excited. That's that's super cool. And we were talking about before when we first came on, we're, we're recording this via Zoom. And I had said, how's it going? And it's like, well, better than I was at the beginning, better than a tech director in the middle of a pandemic. So very stressful. That is fair. So yeah, those were those were the longest. Those are some long for a tech director, for a site administrator, for teachers, for anyone in education, uh, those two years felt like two decades, I think. So, yes. Definitely added some gray to my goatee. And <laughs> if I had any hair left on the head, it would have uh, would have taken the rest of it. So, well, the the impetus, I believe, is the correct word the, that I listen to, for anyone listening, Billy, you have a podcast, which we'll talk about at the end, called Bill Selleck Talks. We'll give you an opportunity to, to to plug that at the end. But you you just released a new episode a couple of days ago, and I was driving home listening to your episode. And the type of thing that anyone driving along next to me would have seen, like, why is he nodding his head? Why is he going like, yes? Like, because I was just in my car going like, oh my gosh, Bill has crawled He's crawled up inside my brain and he's it's like he's got a front row seat to what I'm thinking right now. And I and I reached out to you and said, Will you come on the podcast? Cause I think I, I want to get this message that you've got out to a lot of people. And you were talking about creativity. We talk a lot about creativity with students and the need to give students the the, the four C's and, and to be creative. But I think too often we neglect ourselves. Yeah, we sure do. In that equation, so so I, I just I want to pass pass the mic. You've already got the mic, but I, I want to pass the mic to you and say, can you can you just give anyone listening right now a, a brief? Again, I don't want you to the whole thing because because we're going to direct people to your podcast too. I don't want to steal steal that thunder because. But you talked about creativity and the need for us to be creative. So tell me tell me what you talked about. Well, yeah. And so I think a lot of people talk about like the need to be creative, but it's not like we need to be creative in like a we need to, but like we actually need to. So for me to do a good job at my job, I actually need to be in a creative headspace. And so two things kind of kicked me onto this. And I, when I put those two ideas together, I was like, oh, here's the podcast episode. And so kind of part one was uh, I was talking with John Ike on Voxer, which I'm still on and love. Uh, it's great for those conversations that take like a month because they're yep. just, you know, never on the same time, never same place at the same time. Uh, and he was like, hey, I, I heard this thing from Brene Brown where like she has to walk five miles a day and swim three days a week. 
in order to get like in the right headspace to be creative because her job requires creativity, right? So it's kind of the first part of like, she has to swim, she has to walk, or she cannot do her job. The second thing, I've been doing some leadership coaching with Amy Giles. So if anyone's looking for a leadership coach, Amy is A-I-M-E-E, Amy Giles, she's incredible. We hop on the Zoom. She's over in Cape Cod. I'm here in the California. Um, Amazing. And so one thing she was talking to me about is this kind of Goldilocks zone of your brain. So we know the prefrontal cortex, that's the part that helps us make rational decisions. And so I knew before our call that like, when you get beyond stressed, suddenly you can't do like these basic things, you know, like it it might be like, I'm struggling to actually get my work done. You know, I have this thing I need to do, but like you get like writer's block or the, the whatever, there's like all kinds of things that get in the way of people doing their work. And I think that's pretty common as like this, this kind of overloading of it. And you're not making those decisions that you either know are right. Like I really need to be doing this project, but I just can't get on it. Um, or you're just failing to, to really like engage your prefrontal cortex. But Amy actually walked me through this thing where you can actually kind of underwhelm it. And so she shared an article with me this morning. It's actually called the Yerkes Dodson Law. It's really just a bell curve, like an inverted U curve, right? And so you want to get that Goldilocks zone where you're not overstimulating your brain, but you're also not understimulating it. And so the part that resonated with me is, um, I get this feeling of kind of meh. So like the emoji movie, there's that emoji meh, mm-hmm. and his parents do nothing but meh. And so like when I'm feeling that, I feel like I'm kind of in this funk. Um, and actually like when she was explaining this kind of Goldilocks zone for your brain, like, oh, like that's that's what it is. And so she walked me through kind of a couple of protocols of, of like how I've historically kind of gotten out of that. And what I realized is that I need to be creative do an act of creativity not just like i'm a creative dude Mm -hmm. but actually like engage in a task of creativity much like Brene brown walks five miles a day for me to get into kind of that zone of being not overwhelmed not underwhelmed but can we call it whelmed whelmed (laughs) (laughs) that just right level of being whelmed Uh, i need to do a creative thing So it's maybe hopping to GarageBand or Logic Pro and just like noodling around with some loops or like digging into a tutorial about something. Maybe it's hopping, um, I mean, so many things, just like a quick lap around our school, take a couple photos, you know, but doing something to really like take control of that and not just be like, I feel meh. And then three hours later, I'm like, I still haven't done the thing I need to do because I've been just like stuck in this meh zone. Really, it's just me being kind of underwhelmed out of that Goldilocks kind of zone in my brain. Um, And by spending like even just 10 minutes hopping into GarageBand, noodling around with a couple loops and writing a piece of music that, you know, no one will ever see. Like, that's not the point. Mm -hmm. But the point is to engage in the thing. And then that actually bumps me into that just right zone. Then I can be focused. I can tackle the whatever the thing, whatever the thing is. Um, Yeah. Yeah. That's... It's like you're blowing my mind a second time. And I hope that anyone listening right now is hit. I loved what you said at the beginning. She has to engage in that creative outlet in order to do her job. Yes. And you had mentioned before, like sometimes how it's easy to feel. And as you were saying, like take a walk around the block or walk around the campus or get on here for just 10 minutes. We can feel guilty Absolutely. when we do that. Absolutely. But but if we if we try to shift our mindset, because I won't feel like that sometimes, like I'm now I'm not at a site anymore. I've been principal for the last nine years. I'm now at our district office where I support all of our schools, but my office is at the district level. And uh uh I don't like to be in the office all the time. I gotta get out of the office and sometimes I will take a lap. I have to clear my head and I have to overcome. And you talking about this is good for me because sometimes I wonder like, what is what if somebody sees me walking around? You know what I'm saying? Like, are they going to, why isn't he working? All kinds of guilt. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But what? 100%. 
But what if what if everyone shifted the mindset? It's like, but that is working. Like that is carrying his mind for work by taking. I mean, and we we're so good as leaders telling our teachers, take care of yourself, make sure that you're go home, don't stay at work too late. And I think too often we neglect, we, we, we set ourselves on fire to keep others warm. Um, but I just, I, I loved how you, your examples are Logic Pro, GarageBand, because, because you have a musical background. I sure do. Yeah. You were, was it second, second, you taught, was it second grade? Or yeah. So I taught second grade, kindergarten and fourth and fifth grade music. And my undergrad's actually in music. Yeah. So it's like, that's, that's your, that's your, your jam, pun intended. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that's 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 your happy place. Yeah. But I love when you said the the meh because what made me drive in as I was listening to you talk about this the other day was I was just talking to my wife like two or three days prior to hearing your podcast, saying like, babe, like I got to get back into my podcast because I was in and I hadn't I hadn't. Uh, labeled it but it was that it was meant because for the last several i mean back in 2018 i started writing my book so that occupied like a year and a half and then that became published and i got back in the podcast and then i started working on my children's book project and this summer i published that so then that was done and it was like all of my creative outlets were suddenly gone. And when I was in the classroom, it was my classroom website. And I loved to tinker and to create there my student podcast. When I was a principal, it was the social media and the school website. I loved getting to be creative with those outlets. And then I left the I left the site and that dried up. And my book project was done. So that dried up. So it's like I needed and you are you the second like the second, this is the second recording now that I'm back into it. And I just feel, I feel like more energized to do. Number one, I hope that someone listening to this is getting something out of it. But I loved what you said. Even if nobody was, it would be okay. Like you said, no one's going to hear your jams and stuff like that, but that's okay. That's not the point. Are you noticing a change in your body? <laughs> you can see like, me all, yeah. describe like how do you how do you feel like as you were describing your your entire posture changed yeah and you're watching me right now on zoom you yeah. can see me i'm more animated i'm more i'm just more energized and coincident like i'm more focused yeah absolutely it's like it's like if you take it paradoxically or whatever it, if i take a break from what i'm focused on i can come back more focused so, um, yeah. you know, it's so interesting. I just made a connection as you were describing that, um, every once in a while I'm asked to, to edit one of our school's videos, uh, and it's usually video editing. Sometimes it's adding music to it. Uh, and the answer is always, of course, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's also what's the deadline. And, and what I just put together is that I would think that adding that to my plate would, would like overwhelm me, cause things to fall apart. Suddenly I'm dropping all these other balls, but that never happened. Yeah. And you know why? Cause I, I'm hitting that, that just right level yeah. of, of stress, of energy, of, of being whelmed. Um, and suddenly I'm doing that on top of all the other stuff, but then I'm at a hundred percent firing on all eight cylinders, whatever the car analogy is. And then when I get back to it, even if it's just like knocking out a handful of emails, it's just like, boom, 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 boom. And it's not that I have to get those done, so I'm doing a bad job of it. It's that I'm actually like in this spot where I'm, my prefrontal cortex is energized. It's the optimal level of stress, and I'm ready just to to hit it. Um, yeah, that like that. I don't get super far behind when I'm doing those videos. Yeah, optimal level of stress because yeah. some stress is needed. Otherwise, yes. that's where the the lethargy comes from, and. That's that's the whole point of of what that article is, and even as I'm describing it to you, I'm still like I have this like deep like feeling of guilt of like people are going to hear I just noodled around a garage band for ten minutes. Like no, yeah. that's the point. Like I made I make up way more than those ten minutes 
and productivity and like in what I bring to it. Yeah. It's it's an investment of time. Yes. Not uh, an expenditure or a, a waste. I mean, I think that's, I think that we, and this is probably going to be a journey for, I would imagine most people, my, myself too, but most people listening is we just have to shift our mindset that it's not a waste of time. It's an investment of time. And for anyone listening, I would say what, you know what that is. What is what is that creative outlet? Maybe it's walking. Like during the pandemic, for me, when we were when we were at home and we were having to work from home, I remember every afternoon at three thirty or so, we would take a break from the zooms, and I I had to get out. I had to take a walk around my neighborhood. I could check some emails sometimes, but by doing it outside, when I came back, uh, I was so much more refreshed. And I just think. What is that for for anyone listening? Right? Shoot, it might be a coloring book. It might be an adult coloring book. It it might be a po- I mean, it doesn't have to be a podcast. It doesn't have to be video editing. It doesn't have to be creating. Yeah, ex- I know, so a lot of people it's just exercise, it's movement, it's nature, yeah. it's it outdoors. Yeah, yeah, just whatever it is. The need, and it's a need. It's yes. it's. Yeah. I think that that's what you hit on that article and. and the whole brain brain research has like it is a need, and I love how I've, uh, overwhelmed it's not underwhelmed, but we need to be wowed. I love yeah. that. <laughs> yes, yeah. You know, as, as we're reflecting on this, I'm thinking of it was a Thursday or Friday last week. Uh, first grade class needed a projector to like do a silhouette something, and it was one of those where I was definitely like in the mad zone, just like here's a projector, dig it out of storage. And then like the projector didn't work. And then I actually like read through and tried to kind of put my head in their space. I was like, oh, this is actually for a project. And I'm guessing they're doing like a silhouette thing. And so you know, jumped in talking with the teachers and sure enough, it was a silhouette. The projector didn't work. I had some studio lighting, but that lighting's really soft. So you don't get a harsh shadow. You get this really nice diffuse shadow. Yeah. Like, wait a minute, like timeout. And, and this was like right after I was just in, uh, I was in Logic Pro learning about like surround sound, spatial, spatial audio is what it's called. Just dug into that. All right. Like I'm ready to tackle the afternoon I was feeling like very much kind of in that, that just right zone. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was actually, we don't need a projector. Or we don't need this studio lighting. What we actually need to do is, is transform this from analog. Cause they were like, all right, first grader, stay still for 10 minutes while we outline you on a piece of paper and then then you're going to cut it out i was like wait a minute didn't i read something like apple education and it was actually nicole delasio um published that book through apple education around photography and she was using keynote as the workflow where you take a photo bump up the contrast you get a white you know the kids kind of backlit and so you get this really nice you know, yeah silhouette um and texted her and we talked through that and we t- tried a couple things and then actually figured out you can just take a photo in the photos app and when you long press it it actually just knocks out the whole background for you then you just pull down to all of your photos and when you let go it makes a duplicate of that then you take that bump up the contrast black goes all the way white goes the other way and you get this perfect silhouette and you're done and it takes like 20 seconds Mm -hmm. and then from there you can drag into keynote you can grab some icons and you're like all right you know like what do you love i love walking i love soccer i love singing you're like grab a microphone soccer ball and you get this black silhouette of the kid and all these colorful icons over it and it becomes an all about me and then you go to the three dots in the corner record audio and then you do that you have your narration export that as a movie and suddenly like the first grade team is like yes amazing what right so it's not just me saying like here's your projector meh it was suddenly this amazing project that came together in like in minutes and so like what i was able to actually bring to that first grade team and to all those first grade students wasn't just here's a projector that works but here's this amazing project Mm -hmm. that that i had just completely missed before so i think by getting in that just right zone i was able to show up in this way where like there's this epic project suddenly um and it's just making sure that my head is in the space to to be able to engage in that way i love that gosh what a great story and you 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 were in the right space to be able to support your teacher in that classroom because you had invested in a creative outlet to, to to get yourself ready for that. There it is. That's awesome. So 
moral of the story, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for anyone listening, again, just what is it? What is it? Maybe it's maybe it's poetry. Maybe it's writing. Maybe it is music. Maybe it's coloring. Maybe it's exercising. Maybe it's whatever. You don't need to feel guilty. You should not feel guilty because um, that's going to put you in the, I like the, that Goldilocks. Not, not too much stress, not too little, but just right stress. So I absolutely love that. Bill, thank you. Really appreciate you taking the time again. Um, so how can, for anyone who's going like night, who's, oh my gosh, I got to connect with Bill. How can someone connect with you? And I mentioned your podcast. Tell us about your podcast and all of your all of your good resources that you've got out there. Yes, all of the humans can find me. Uh, just if you can spell my name, S E L A K Selick, you can find me on all the things, even Mastodon. Uh, podcast is Bill Selick Talks because my name is Bill Selick and I talk. Website is BillSelick.com. All the socials is at Bill Selick. Um, I try to be easy to find. Yes, it, you, you, I love how not all those names were taken. So, which is good. Like I've got Brent Coley for most of them, but not all of them because a few, a few Brent Coley's were taken. So yeah. fun fact, there is another Bill Selleck that when we first connected was a first grade teacher. <laughs> and so <laughs> what are the, uh, he signs up on all the things. He's like, ah, the other, uh, he, the other Bill goes by like, beat me to it. Now he goes by William Selleck on most of the things because uh, I beat him to funny. it all the time. Awesome. Well, Bill, I appreciate you uh, you sharing. Um, it's it's good to see you virtually. Hopefully, I, I saw you a year ago at Spring Q. I hope to see see you again in a couple months. What well, and should we book out what every hundred three episodes? So I'll see. Yeah, episode, so at, at, uh, episode yeah. two hundred nine. <laughs> well, we'll mark mark the Cal Sunyan in by for for your calendar. So <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Bill, thank you. And for everyone listening, thank you so much. I uh, hope you got something out of this. I'm, I know I did. Again, I always say, like, if no one else is listening, kind of like along the lines of this, uh, this was created for me. I am going to be better uh, to go back and, and focus on on my other duties. So appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed to the podcast, remember you can find us anywhere. You get your podcasts, Spotify. It's even an Audible now, which is cool. Or you can listen directly on my website at brentcoley.com. And until next time, because hopefully the next time will be a lot, because I got to stay creative. We'll have another episode soon. Until next time, everyone, have a good one.